Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Diana Martin, and I'm from the Northern Cape Tourism Authority. And I'm here today to share a little bit about the Northern Cape with you. The Northern Cape is one of large, the largest provinces of South Africa. We have two of the world-renowned deserts, two of Africa's largest rivers, two world heritage sites, five regions, and seven routes, all combining to make visiting the Northern Cape a truly a remarkable experience. Just to orientate you where we are, we are bordering Botswana and Namibia to the north, and our provincial neighbors are the Western Cape, Eastern Cape, Free State, and the Northwest. We have two major airports, Kimberley and Uppington airports, and we have daily flights from Cape Town and Johannesburg to these airports. We also have all the major car hire companies at these two airports, and also our road infrastructure is really good. And that is very important as we are mostly a South Drive destination. But as I said, we have five regions. The very first region is the Diamond Fields region. This has become very, very famous because of all the diamonds that has been discovered there through the last century. Kimberley is the capital city of, of the Northern Cape, and this is also very evident of its diamond history. Suggested itinerary to explore the city and surroundings is two to three days. And some of the things that they can see and do is, of course, the Belgravia Historical Walk, where one can visit and see some of those historical buildings and houses. The only mine that is still operating today that one can actually go and visit is the Bultfontein Mine. And also for world famous photography of the people of South Africa, one can see at the Duncan Cronin Gallery. Johnfield Nature Reserve is only 10 kilometers away for an afternoon game drive. And then, of course, one can enter there. What a wonderful, scary ghost trail. There's also the Kimberley Club. It has been established in the last century. And famous members of this club includes Rhodes, Bonatu, um, and then, of course, also the Upper Niners. They are still members today. McGregor Museum was first a hotel in a health resort and today a world-class museum where one can especially see the three million years of human history of the Northern Cape. Sopleik is also worth a visit the museum. This is where Sopleik stayed during his last days. The big hall and the Kimberley Mine Museum, of course, is the most well-known and this is a really good three-hour visit to see and experience the mine experience and then wander around in the replication of the old town. William Humphrey is also good to visit. They have very, very important collections of modern African art and some of the old masters. Wildebeuse Coil Art Center is just 20 kilometers away and one can see more than 400 ancient rock engravings. Or you can also take a little ride in our vintage tram. It's the only one still in existence today that is also operating. Next visit is to the Halishiwa Township. This is one of the oldest townships in the country, and they also played a very crucial part in the liberation of our country. Your three hour walk or cycle tour will take you to the old Bantu Hall, the Halishiwa Arts and Culture Precinct, Robert Sebukwe's house, and also for coffee and lunch at the local coffee shops all the town. Next, we are starting on one of the very first um, routes that we have. This one takes you all along the N12 and N16, and it traverses through small towns of Warrington, Kimberley, Hopetown, and Brutstown along the N12, and the R, Hanover, and Richmond along the N16. This is a perfect stopover for travelers between Johannesburg and Cape Town, or Johannesburg and the Eastern Cape. This route will also attract those who will appreciate culture and history, adventure seekers and nature lovers. And I did a suggestion if you would like to do the entire experience, it's about three to eight days and you can either do it Cape Town to Johannesburg or Johannesburg to Cape Town. So we'll start with the adventure seekers. There's world class fly fishing at Kwikwi River Lodge. You, do, you can do kayaking and canoeing at the various game reserves along the Mall River or at Van de Pleur. There's also very many mountain biking and hiking trails to see. For the culture enthusiast, there are many local arts and crafters throughout the root towns. It's very evident, of course, is the Botswana culture. There are many donkey carts for the whole family to enjoy, historical town walks, and then also we have some of the museum and houses of famed authors, such as Olaf Schreiner in Gaar. 
There are also very many quite sun engravings on various farms. And then for the Anglo Boer enthusiasts, you can relive the most famous of all sieges, Mahusmansen. This is only 40 kilometers outside Kimpi. And then, of course, also ends with a visit to the concentration camp museum near Hope Town. For nature lovers, there are very many reserves to enjoy, from the famous Mokala National Park to private game reserves such as the Karuwa Harip Nature Reserve, Karihikluf, Kui Kui River Lodge, and then also there is the second largest dam in the country, the Van der Kluf Dam, and then our provincial reserves from the Dorenkluf and Wolfontein to enjoy. Next, we're going to the Kalari region. This, of course, is the very famous um, Kalari Desert. And this is also people that are traveling from Gauteng to Namibia or the Cape by Appington. One can travel through this region. The main town of this area, of course, is Kurumang. And it is also known as the oasis of the Northern Cape, as they have always this ongoing eye of Kurumang that is a non-stop spring that brings wonderful clear water to the town. And also, if you want to visit this town, you can do a three to six hour experience that will take you to the Eye of Kuruman, Hotel Halakhadi and the Winter Car Collection, the Moffat Mission Station, and then also for a modern day township experience, Workshop Kokasi for lunch. Then the, the, the second route, of course, is the Gagarp route. This is a new and fascinating heritage route covering everything from famous archaeological sites, historic towns, amazing architecture, and an excellent selection of game reserves and highlights. Um, and this is also about three to 10 days if you would like to do the entire tour. Of course, you can stop and go as you wish. So for the adventure seekers, there's belonging in the Wunderbar Caves, many game drives and hikes on the numerous farms and game reserves, hunting, mountain biking, and horse riding. For nature lovers, of course, there's the Kuruman Ai, Bitsand Nature Reserve, and of course, Swalu, the most famous of all the reserves. It is one of the unique lodges of the world and it offers exclusive camps and very many child-friendly experiences. For culture lovers, there's the Voldebius Scroll near Barclay West, the Moffat Mission Station in Kuruman, the Mary Moffat Museum in Krikwatan, the Kukasi Cultural Experience in Motivistat, and very many Botswana and Krikwa cultural experiences throughout the route. There's also a fascinating other small route that one can enjoy. It's called the Roaring Kalari route. And I started from Kimberley and ending in Kimberley. And this will take you about five to seven days. Of course, it will take you longer should you wish to linger longer along the way. But starting in Kimberley, we travel to Kuruman and enjoy those experiences that I've mentioned before. You can either sleep over in Kuruman or travel straight on to, to, to Katu for early morning golf around at the Sishan Golf Course. The afternoon, we can go and visit the Dwering Draad Contre Cave Place. It's a wonderful, typical South African visit um, place on the Hamkara River. Down. The, the next morning, we leave early for Black Rock and go and view the manganese mineral collection at the Asman Mines. The afternoon and also our sleepover for that day is at Tota Farm for the amazing Tota Bucky skiing experience. I think the next morning early we leave for Makasi Rest on the Botswana border. Stay at Van Sales Rest where we can visit the Meerkat Manor, well, the British uh, broadcasting Meerkat Manor. This is where it was shot. And then picnic on the banks of the ancient Malopa River. The next day we leave for Halakhadi Transport Deer Park. And there are very many options for here. One can stay inside the park at one of the very one great camps of the, the park. You can stay outside the gate at the Halakhadi um, Lodge. It's only two kilometers to the camp. And then of course you can stay as many days as you wish. When you leave, we visit Uppington, and there's also a really great to stay at least an afternoon in Uppington and explore the wonderful things to see and do there. And then, if you do not wish, you can continue and either stop over at Vitsand Nature Reserve and experience the roaring sands of the Canary. Then, leaving back the next morning on your way, stop at Krikwa Town, visit the Mary Moffat Museum, and then you arrive back to Kimberley. So that is a wonderful short experience. Next, we are visiting the Green Kalahari region of the Northern Cape. This is a fascinating area because you have the semi-desert area and then the lush green vineyards all along the Harij River. 
We're stopping off at Uppington. Uppington is the second largest town of the Northern Cape. And it is also very contrasting from the semi-desert to the green lush um, orange river that moves past it. And a suggestion to visit the Uppington town, three to hours to a full day experience, depending on the time that you have. So we're starting our visit to Uppington 26 monument. This is in the township of the Babelo. And this is again also thinking of those that lost their lives during the struggle movement. You can take a selfie at the Camel and Donkey Monuments and go and see the Date Palm Avenue. It's at the entrance to the Eiland Resorts and it is this staggering 1.4 kilometers long. You can also visit the Kalahari Oranya Museum Complex. Go and visit the South African Dried Fruit Cooperative. This is the largest of its kind in the Southern Hemisphere. Of course, then you can take time out and go and relax with a wine tasting experience at the Orange River Wine Tasting Rooms in Uppington. And then also an afternoon um, river cruise with Sakisa Aki on the Sunset Cruise. We are starting now on our uh, third um, route, the Kalahari Red Dune route. This is a wonderful experience with the red and golden sun dunes of the Kalahari, and it stretches all the way from Uppington right to the Namibian border. We pass the towns of Askam, Hurt and Klenmi, and Ritfontein. Adventure, culture, and eco nature lovers can experience the unique offerings of this route. And accommodation on this route also varies from farm stays, boutique lodges, and camping. So, again, this route experience is about three to seven days, can be a bit longer, it can be shorter, just depending on your interests and the time that you have. But the highlights include a visit for culture, Diamond Tea shop, Coffee Shop, they are very famous for their milk tarts. Ankura's farm kitchens for traditional cuisine and authentic Bushman arts and crafts for sale all along the way. This is also one of those UNESCO World Heritage Sites I mentioned in, the, in, in my, my introduction, the Komani Cultural Landscape. This is here where you can experience and learn about the world's oldest culture, the Komani Sun. You can join a tour with Finky's Tours or you can visit the San Komani's Community Lodge, Air and Echo Lodge, or you can visit Carl's Lodge in the Halakhadi Transfrontier Park for an experience with this um, unique people. So if you're looking at the nature experience on this route, you can experience a wonderful dune sunset tours and desert dinners. Meerkat experiences you can have morning or evening walking um, tours and guided drives. This is also being um, announced as the Dark Sky Sanctuary, one of only um, 10 in the world and the one only one in Africa for the best stargazing in the world. They are guided bird watching ga trails, game viewing drives and walks, dune and desert landscapes, or you can of course go and visit the Kalahari Transfrontier Park, which is home to the mighty Kalahari Desert. This is one of the largest um, parks in South Africa and it is also bordering and connecting the Northern Cape with Namibia and Botswana. For the adventure lovers, there's great many things to experience. At Khurapan, you can do 4x4 routes and challenges. At the Kalari Info Tented Camp, there are 4x4 dune experiences, sunset tours, camping, and desert dinners. At the Roy Day Guest Farm, you can do sandboarding and sand um, diving. At Khalakhadi Trails, they offer the morning and evening walking tours and guided drives and a visit to the Yekat Sanctuary. Or oh, you can play like you're in the Red Sea and go and float on one of the salt pans. Really amazing. And then of course there are numerous hiking and walking trails. Also, I'm sure you have heard about the Bloodhound um, land speed attempt that happened last year. The car eventually arrived in the Northern Cape in October last year and they have reached a staggering 100 1,100 kilometers. Um, so since then, Huxley and Pan has become a household name worldwide, and event organizers around the world is making a car inquiries to host, or they've already hosted mega events on this outdoor um, space. Some of these events included the desert music events and concerts, motor and track launches, astrotourism events, mega outdoor events, and of course, we eagerly await the return of Bloodhound to make their final attempt to reach that 1,600 kilometers per hour. 
Next, we're moving to the Corbett tree root. This is very much for those that are wanting a great lifestyle, nature, and adventure experience. It is named after the indigenous Corbett tree. And this route stretches all along the mighty Orange River, and it takes you into one of the most interesting and beautiful areas of the Northern Cape. And it traverses the small towns of Kemus, Kanonela, Kenart, Ochrabis, Uppington, and Marshan. And this is really a truly beautiful experience for adventure seekers, families, and the over 50 travelers. So again, it is three to 10 days. Of course, you can make shorter or longer as you wish. We're starting with the nature experiences on this route. One can visit Rimfas Hot Springs, the Ohrabis Falls at the National Park, the Kurve Tree Forest at Mashan, bird watching in the park, game drives and walks, and also astonishing stargazing. For the adventure, there's countless adventure opportunities for families and the more adventure travelers. And these include through first mark hikes, sailing and rock climbing. At Kamkiri and Tutuan, they offer river rafting, fly fishing and kayaking. And there are again numerous 4 by 4 routes, hiking and mountain bike trails, game drive and horse hiding trails. For those that is just wanting to chill out and enjoy it, there are really also a great many opportunities. You can take your weekend break at any one of the top game lodges, game farms or guest houses on the route. Can take leisurely outings on the river barge at Camp Kiri, easy hiking trails at the Khrabis National Park, or also stay for the night game drives to see the nocturnal wonders of this park. Can again go and enjoy the sunset cruise on Sakisa Arki and Uppington, or you can simply go and while away the afternoon on a brandy and wine tasting tour. You can start at the Mast in Kakamas then on to Bezalel outside Cambridge and end up in Uppington at the Orange River Wine Cellars. You can also visit the numerous pot cellar for local cuisine and art of the region or indulge in the luxurious spa break at the African Vineyard Spa. And then while you're there, you might as well stay for a leisurely afternoon tea. We move now on to the rest, the next um, region, the Karua region. This is offering small and isolated Karua Dorpis, the distinct um, architecture and very many churches. And then also, this is also great for that warm Karua hospitality and food. And this also offers two routes. But first we stop in the R. It is the third largest um, after towns in the Northern Cape, and it is located on the main railway line and main highways between Johannesburg, Cape Town, Port Elizabeth, and Namibia. Also possible to stay away for a stay and while away for the day or half a day. And some of the experiences can include a visit to the, the R um, Railway Museum and Station, the Garden of Remembrance. Olive Shriners House and Restaurant, Historical Town Walk, and go and visit the local artists such as Sam, Moy, Frendisa, and Roofs. The Karua Highlands route is on this, and it features the small towns of Nivotsville, Kafinia, Williston, Sutherland, Fraserburg, Carnarvon, Luxton, and Victoria West, the heart of the Great Karua. This is definitely recommended for slow travel, solo travel, adventure and nature lovers, and those interested in archaeology, paleontology, and astronomy. There's much to entertain them on this route. So we'll start with nature. And again, a suggestion is three to seven days, but again, it offers so much, you can stay much longer and enjoy all that is on offer. So for those interested in paleontology, definitely to go on a dinosaur walk in Frasenburg. There are also guided paleontology and botany tours in Sutherland in Sutherland. The rock art that can be viewed on farms throughout the region. And then there are numerous game reserves and nature reserves from Tanko Karua National Park, Akran Dam Nature Reserve outside Kalfinia, and Durham Kloof and Urlochs Kloof in Nature Reserve outside Colesburg and Nivotsville. Then, of course, the Hantam National Botanical Garden in Nivotsville. This is also an amazing experience for, for stargazing, and this is on offer throughout the region, but definitely not to be missed at Salt in Sutherland and at Starland or at the SKA in Carnarvon. 
For the adventure lovers, again, there are numerous mountain biking trails and cross-country routes, multi-day hiking and walking trails, and also multi-day Caminos, starting in the Western Cape and ending in the Northern Cape. For families, there are great, great experiences from farm holidays, camping, and half a day to full day easy walking trails, town walks in Calfinia, Sutherland, and Fraserburg, or join the locals for a real dance. Lifestyle, you can enjoy one of the many festivals and local farm shows, the Karua architecture, and enjoy the slow Karua cuisine, cheese tasting in Williston, book readings and, and festivals in Richmond and in Loxton. Also very, very much in, in, in view wherever you go is the thousand wind pumps and vast spaces on this route. We're moving now to the last of the regions. It is the Makwa region. And this, of course, is also very well famous and well known for the annual flower um, offering. And this, when it is transformed into this absolutely amazing landscape of just flowers. The region is also home to two routes that will take the visitors to the smaller communities and towns of this region. We start again in Springbok, which is the largest town in this area, and it is also very well known for its mining history and um, Second World War experiences, and it's also a good stopover for those traveling from Namibia to Cape Town or Cape Town to Namibia. And also for you to once a while away, it's also great to stay there for three to uh, hours to a full day. You can visit the Monument Kopi. It's a historical grave site with graves and landmarks of the Anglo Boer War. The Blue Copper Mine. Copper was discovered in this area as early as 1685, and it is the start of commercial mining in South Africa. You can do also the town walk and visit the Dutch Reformed Church and go and visit the Springbok Museum and Info. This is housed in an old synagogue and it offers great many information on the history of this town and the mining. We can also visit the Khuhab Nature Reserve for hiking and game drives. Also visit also the permanent garden display. And also visit the smelting ferments. This is a, re um, a reminder of its mining history of the town. We start on the first route of this area, which is the Ruchtersveld. The Ruchtersveld is South Africa's only mountain desert, and the route travels along the rugged gravel roads to quaint towns such as Extinfontein, Sandlingstruf, Lickerson, Kubus, and Sandruf. This route is best suited to the adventurers, families, and friends, as four-wheel drive vehicles is a must. Botanists, nature, and cultural levels will find it uniquely appealing. A gain to route experience is between five and ten days um, departing out of Cape Town, but you can also travel all the way from Johannesburg and experience this route. So for the adventure lovers, as I say, they are guided and non-guided 4x4 trail experiences with Namakwa 4x4 tours. Or you can join the Namakwa and Richtersveld Bike Aminos, a multi-day mountain biking experience through the Richtersveld Transfrontier Park and neighboring towns. Or the Richtersveld Camino, it is a guided multi-day hike through this stunning landscape. You can also do a river safari. There are multi-day kayaking experiences on the Orange River. There are various tour operators that are offering this. Or you can go wild yellow fish flying in uh, fly fishing in the Orange River. There's also operators at offices. Or you can go on a leisurely half a day to full day kayaking or canoe experience on the Orange River. The Ruchtersveld cultural landscape, this is the second um, of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites in the Northern Cape. And this has been named as a World Heritage Site to protect the unique botanical um, offering and the culture of this area. So if we're here to visit this area, we definitely recommend a full day experience to the heart of the um, cultural uh, landscape which is Extian Fontaine. And this will include a walk with a normal goat herder, learn to make bread with his wife, enjoy lunch with traditional offerings, and also enjoy some Nama storytelling and music. And if you're lucky, you can also see and join in in the traditional Nama stuff. The unique natural landscape of this region, dating back millennia, offers unique experiences. You can also do guided paleontology walks here, 
guided botanical walks. Of course, you can view the annual Namaqua flowers, visit the I.I.S. Richtersfeld Transfrontier Park. You also have astonishing stargazing through this area, and there's also some mining tours to enjoy. We are going now to the last of our route offerings that we have into Northern Cape. It is the Namaqua Coastal Route. The route includes hidden gems like Hairis, Kami Skun, Ondekler Bay, Koingas, and Plainsia. There are dozens of adventure and leisure options along this coastal route. The Namaqua National Park, other nature reserve, hidden coastal hamlets, and some of the, the region's most remote hiking and four by four hiking uh, trails are here. And it offers many family bucket list experiences. Also, we will make, recommend a four by four vehicle to explore this route fully. Again, the route itinerary is our standard three to 10 days, but you can easily uh, do it for a weekend out of Cape Town or a midweek break or a little micro travel break of three to four days. So we suggest again for the adventure of seekers, a guided four by four shipwreck trail, this is near Clancia, a guided half day to full day hiking um, trails, a guided multi-day slow packing hike along the Namaqua coast, South Drive or guided 4x4 routes and is amazing fishing and hiking along the coast. As with the Richterswald route, this offers a great cultural experience in the Kami Skruen and environs. Again, one can go on a guided uh, Nama cultural tour with a full day excursion with a herder as he tends his goats to parting out of Springbok. We can stop over at lunch at Petro Kluwe Farm for a cultural and traditional offering or at the Kluwe's Convos in Kami Skun, or stop at any one of the local cook scams for a local offering. The route is best known for its iconic natural experiences. Again, 4x4 is the best to explore the remote coastline of this route. There's a coastal 4x4 journey from Clancy to Hontekler Bay. You can explore the Namakwa National Park. You enter in Skulpat Gate and enter at Hoon River Gate, and this takes you along some of the most breathtaking natural landscapes and seascapes. Of course, the annual Namaqua flower season and the world's richest botanical and floral kingdom is year-round available. You can either explore by yourself or join one of the botanical guides that are at any one of the towns. You can visit Hondekler Pai and witness some of the biggest waves ever breaking at Spitfire Rock. And then for a special ex, um, experience is the flower camps that opens annually in Skolpat and at Khurun Rafir. I also wanted to stop over and just um, with Sutherland. Sutherland is one of the small Karua towns famous for its dramatic stargazing, its snowy winter, and it is also a great getaway for those that is um, staying in Cape Town. It's only a four hour drive and it is really great for a weekend stay or a, again, a macro travel. Winter especially is very popular to visit um, Sutherland as it's got beautiful snow landscape always. So what can you do for your weekend uh, away? So there's the Sutherland Planetarium. They offer unique sun gazing and digital tours of the universe. There's a walking town tour that will take you past some of the oldest towns and especially the Van Weyck Lowe's and the Hoorte Kerk dating back to the 1870s. Sterland Farm, just outside of the town, offer guided fossil and botanical tours during the day and sky gazing tours at night. And of course, the South African Astronomical Observatory, or SALT as we call it, is the largest optical telescope in the Southern Hemisphere and offers day and night stargazing experiences and tours. You can also visit Blissbok Fontaine Farm for walks, horse riding, stargazing, and a great farm experience. Or you can indulge in a five star experience at the Rojo Club and enjoy cheetah tra trekking, wine tasting, guided game drives, and hikes. So that is now bringing me to the conclusion of my presentation. But may I just remind you, though we cannot travel right now, the health and safety of our visitors is paramount. But even if we have to stay apart, travel can still bring us together. So from all of us here in the Northern Cape, let's keep the travel spirit alive. Explore our unique offerings with your clients. 
full day bucket list of experiences with our breathtaking natural wonders, our cultural exploration, our incredible real people, real rel relaxation, real share time, real adventure, solo adventure, and soon we will welcome all back to the Northern Cape in person. Stay inspired from Team Northern Cape. So just for inquiries and trade assistance um, with itinerary development, trade hosting, any other questions, or if you would maybe like to complete our e-learning modules, um, please do contact myself. My details are on the screen. And I've also just also um, included some information, some marketing collateral, so that you can also see for yourself what other offerings are available in the many, many towns of the Northern Cape. Those are downloadable at the bottom. And if you still have time, two minutes, and you can see um, a short video that I've also included for you here. So thank you very much, and we hope to see you soon in the Northern Cape.